Hello everybody. Today I'd like to show you my uh, today I'd like to show you my new and updated program. I added a lot of features, worked out a lot of bugs, and uh, it seems to be working pretty smoothly right now. I have some stuff written down that I should show you here, and I'm just going to go through it. First, I'm going to show you what you can do with it, and then I'll show you how to use it. Okay, so first uh, I'm going to show you this is a NOR gate. So you can place these NOR gates, and basically, the NOR gate turns off if any of its inputs are on. And you can tell if the NOR gate is off because it looks like that. And it turns dark. So I'm going to turn on uh, these purple ones are switches. And I'm going to turn on one of the switches, and as you can see, it turns it off. And if I turn on any of these switches, it will turn this NOR gate off. Um, I'm using this OR gate out here as an output, so um, just you can see the arrow points to that one, and uh, it uh, matches this one because it connected like that. Uh, this is an OR gate, so it turns on if any of its inputs are on, um, and this is an AND gate, so it turns on if only both of its inputs are on, and. Uh, so you can see if one of them is on it will not turn on but if both of them are on it will turn on so basically this is for building digital kind of circuits and uh, hopefully you should be able to make a computer using this I'm kind of working on it so um, I should show you a few more other things this one is a XOR gate which turns on if uh, its outputs are different or it turns on if only one of its inputs are on. So as you can see, if both of its inputs are off, it's off. If one of its inputs are on, it's on. And if both of its inputs are on, it's off. So that's the important part about the XOR gate. And uh, this is a design that I basically copied from Minecraft. These things work a lot like the torches in Minecraft, and that's where I got the idea from. <laughs> so here's some more examples of what you can do. Um, here, I'm going to draw just this little loop here, and we can see that basically uh, this one's turning this one off, and this one is off, so it can't turn this one off, so this one's on, and this one's turning this one off, and since this one's off, it doesn't turn this one off, so it's stuck in this state, but if I turn this on, then it turns that one off and it cascades around and makes it so that it saves a different state. So this is sort of like a, a way of saving stuff. And you don't have to use four nodes to do this. You could just link the two nodes to each other like that. Maybe that's even a little bit simpler to understand, but it's a little bit harder to see that these two nodes are connected to each other. However, it's kind of evident here. You can see they're both pointing at each other. They both have those black arrows. Um, and as you can see, if I turn this one off, it will let this one turn on, and that will make sure that that one stays off. So you can use this to store memory. And uh, there's a common <clears throat> way of storing memory called a D-latch. And basically the D-latch takes its... Oh shit, I just deleted that. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to have to reconnect it. Thankfully, it should be too hard. Here we go. Okay, so the D latch, the way it works, is that this is the data input. As you can tell, as you can see, I'm, uh, I should probably uh, label the output as well. <laughs> so, right now, let's put the output over here. I'm going to make that an OR gate. Um, here we go. Okay, so, if I turn this on, it does not change the output, but if I enable it, enable the, basically, I'm enabling the save of this data pin here. So I could lock it on high, and now it doesn't matter what I do to this, it's locked on high, and if I enable it, I can lock it on low, and as you can see I can change this and it will not change that so um, 
basically this is the enable it enables this bit to match this bit and it will save that state so that's a dlatch you'd use that in something like ram um, because of the way this program works um, not everything gets updated right away there's a there's a cascading sort of uh, logic for each node connected to the next node and it's not instantaneous at all so when this node when I turn when I'm gonna flip this switch uh, this node is going to turn on and in the next frame it'll turn this one off and <clears throat> this one will stay off because this one is now going to be on um, let me just better if I just show you so nothing really happened there but now when I turn this switch on this one will turn off in the next frame both of these nodes will be allowed to turn on and in the frame after that this node will turn this one off so this will send out basically like a one tick pulse if you're familiar with Minecraft terms but uh, it sends out a one tick pulse and it goes around there super fast you can't even see it this uh, program is running at like 100 frames a second right now so you, it's going around and it's moving around uh, 100 it's take, taking one step 100 every hundredth of a second and this is more like uh, this one's a little bit easier to see um, because instead it'll be on for half the time and off for half the time so you can make clocks with this kind of thing so without showing you how I'm going to open a file just one of the files that you can open with this as you can see I have a calculator here uh, it's sort of a calculator but you can enter numbers into here and here <clears throat> and it will output uh, at output the addition of those two numbers so this one is zero this one's zero right now but this would be let's say one and as you can see one plus zero is one and one plus one is two and here's a classic little math thing two plus two is four <laughs> so this is like numpads right here um, I could put in a five five plus four is nine and four plus four is eight so you might think I'm avoiding conditions where the answer is greater than ten or greater than nine because this can't display answers which are greater than nine but it kinda can if you add a few more symbols a b c d e f and use a different uh, number system called hexadecimal which you may have heard of hopefully if you're watching this video um, but basically I can put together 5 plus 5 is a and a represents 10 in hexadecimal and uh, 5 plus 6 is 11 so there's B B is 12 C is 13 D is 14 and F is the highest number you can display with this thing oh yeah I forgot about E <laughs> uh, so this is 14 <laughs> oops and this is 15 and you can see this uh, what is 6 plus 9 it is 15 I hope I didn't say 14 last time I meant to say 15 so 6 plus 9 is 15 and the cool thing about this is it rolls over basically gives you the first digit of the calculation in a hexadecimal so if I go to 9 plus 9 9 plus 9 is 18 uh, minus 16 that's two a so it kind of it actually works even with numbers higher than that and um, you can tell it is um, outputting a number that's greater than it should be able to because the carry out would be on and the carry out looks sort of like this it is the or of this gate 
in this case. So it's on right now. But as you can see, if the number is actually, let's say, 2, then that won't be on. So I'd be able to use this to hook it up to many displays or whatever. I won't go too in-depth in there. Here's a decoder. Looks like a total mess. But, you know, there's that. I'm going to open another file here. Boom. And I'm going to... Here's like a f so far failed uh, project thing that I'm working on. And it's going to be RAM. However, I made my D latches wrong for my RAM, so it's not really proper, but I'm going to fix it. And But basically, you can see using the same method I did for that calculator, you should be able to address these different bytes using uh, these this number here. So that's like a 5. And as you can see, it lets the fifth one, one or zero, one, two, three, four, five. It, it lets that one turn on when I enter five. And hopefully when I'm done with this, it'll be able to write this number here in that sp location when I enable it using this. But it's not working right now. So um, I'm pretty sure this one will not work anymore, but I'm going to try anyway. Oh, and it does work. Hey, that's great. Okay, so this is a binary counter. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Oh, it's going a little too fast to actually see what's going on here. But this is counting in 0 all the way up to 32. And as you can see, it actually does it pretty quick. So it rolls over now. And it's already at 8. And it's already at 16. And it's already at uh, 8 plus 16, 24. And it went back to 0. Ah, fuck. Anyway, it, uh, this one counts in binary. So I could probably, <clears throat> if I slowed this down and got the timing and everything right, I could probably hook this up to a display and have it count from 1 to 2 to 3 to 4 to 5 to 6 to 7 to 8. But uh, that's pretty cool. It's a binary counter. And because it's 5 bits, it counts up to 32. So now that I've shown you some cool stuff like that, I'm going to show you how to use a program. Press N to go into NOR mode, or you could just click it. And you can place your nodes. Press OR, and there's no shortcut for that, so you just have to click the button to place an OR gate. Uh, click the switch button here to place a switch. Um, you can select all this stuff and hit delete. Uh, first time you hit delete, it just goes into delete mode, as you can see here. Second time you press delete, it will delete it. <laughs> um, there's no take backsies, okay? So save your work, which I'll show you how to do in a second. But uh, yeah, there's no undoing, so hey, <laughs> hey. Um, so I left off at switch. When you place a switch, one other important thing to know is that you can only interact with it if you're in neutral mode in which case you can toggle it. Yay. So I'm just going to select it and press delete twice on my keyboard. You could also just hit delete once here, but if you actually want to delete a selection, you have to use a delete key. And this one's really important, connect. The shortcut for connect is shift. I'm thinking the shortcut for select should probably be shift, but there's no, <laughs> there's no shortcut for select. So you're just going to have to click it here. But um, by using shift, I can make these connections like so. And just, you know, it's pretty intuitive how it works. You just drag from one node to the other. This one turns off that one. This is the outputting node, and this is the node that is receiving the connection. So that's pretty straightforward. And lastly, there's a great feature right here, pan. And that means you can basically build your circuits as big as you like. Hurrah! Yay, that's really great. I'm going to select this. Delete it. Um, is there... I have some stuff written down here. Copying. Oh yeah, you can copy stuff. So I'll just show you that. It's pretty great. Copy. Oh my god. It copied the circuit. And it's still working. Um, even while you drag it, that's pretty great. <laughs> but uh, you can drag it around. 
which brings me to one point. You cannot, uh, I'll just delete that, but uh, you cannot place two nodes in the same spot. That's a good thing, because if you could, it'd be kind of hard to access the one that's behind it, wouldn't it? So don't do that. <laughs> and, well, so you can, you can, if I'm in nor, nor mode and I try and put a switch here, it's not going to change anything because it's already a NOR gate. Or if I try and put a switch here, it's just going to change it to a switch, but it's not going to actually put another switch there. However, if you do use this select tool, you can overlap two nodes. And that looks pretty confusing, especially because when this one turns on, sometimes it doesn't turn off because there's two overlapping. So don't do that. That's the only uh, it's the only catch to my program. You can press enter to stop making a selection. And oh yeah, I forgot the copying works by pressing control C. It just puts it up in the top left corner and selects it for you so that you go back into neutral mode and you can move it around. Um, delete that. So that's one thing. Don't put nodes on top of each other because it makes them hard to access. And you'll probably just have to delete that both of them and redo everything using that was connected to that node at least. And uh, oh, another thing is so I'm going to show you how to do the opening and saving now. Um, it's just like any other program. I'm going to show you. Well, I can't actually show you, but basically you press Control S, and in the second window, which you'll see if you download this program, um, in the second window, it'll say, um, enter the name of the file you want to save, and you just enter your name. I like to put .nor at the end, because it makes me feel special about my program. So I'm going to save this one as bincount.nor. just going to type that in, press Enter, and it saves it. You can trust that. And you remember to just go back to your uh, original, this window. But um, another thing is sometimes, like, if you click on the second window somewhere, it totally halts the program, which is okay. It's just like pausing it. But if you want to re keep it going, just press escape in the second window, and it will keep on going. So if you want to open something, similarly, just press Control o and uh, type the name of the file you want to open. If it can't open a file, I think it just clears everything. So there's that. And uh, as you can see, I opened calculator.nor here. But if I press Control O and type in something different like ram.nor, I have this here. I can pan around and see everything in all its glory. I'll press Control O and show you that I have demo.nor here. So this is what I was showing you guys. Anyway, if you like this program, you can download it, but um, it might help to know how it sort of works before downloading it. And so if you're not interested and you just want to use it, or if you just want to leave the video, you can leave the video, but I'm going to explain very briefly about how it kind of works. So basically the way it is, is that every frame, or every uh, logic frame, I guess you could say, doesn't have to necessarily render every time it does the logic, but every time it does the logic, it goes through every single connection, and it checks if its input is on, and if it is on, then it will add one to uh, to its outputting node and the outputting node will respond accordingly so basically that's why it doesn't react immediately if I have like a chain of nodes then what will happen is and either way I mean it's not running at full speed right now it can run much, much faster. I'm assuming probably at like f a thousand frames per second. It depends on your sketch or whatever, your NOR file. But uh, as you can see, it's not instantaneous. Actually, it looks pretty much instantaneous here, but it, I, I'm, I'm not joking. This one turns off, then this one turns on, then this one turns 
off, then this one turns on, then this one turns off, and it goes in that order. So it doesn't happen all at once like it may appear to, and that's why you can get this kind of clock thing where it moves. And so you can do timing with this. So I thought that was actually a, maybe an okay feature to just have it go through every no connection and update the nodes um, depending on those connections. So if, uh, if you like this program, give this video a like and uh, comment or whatever like that. Make the YouTube algorithm like this because I really am proud of this. I'd like other people to see it. Um, and tell me about in the comments if you find any bugs in it because I haven't found any recently although I haven't been looking for them so um, other than that I hope you have a good one and uh, thanks for watching have a good one